Good evening again. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to Creations by Julie. I'm Julie. Ed's behind the camera again tonight to catch your questions. We want to make sure we're actually live. Say hi when you hop on. Make sure we can read comments. Facebook's been really good the last few times we've tried. Hi, Karen. So, it looks like we are live. I see Karen's on. So, um, tonight will still be a fairly short, easy, inexpensive um, tutorial, basically. We're going to talk about decoupaging napkins. And I know last week several people had talked about they'd never tried the iron-on technique, so I'm going to kind of explain that as we go. And we're going to use uh, three different napkins that I have. Ann Travis said hello to Lee and Ann. Hi, Ann. Um, wasn't it Ann that won the dish towel? Okay. Ann, I don't know that you saw the comment, but you actually won the dish towel from the live at 1230. I just need to know which one you want. Let, right quick, let me show you those dish towels again. Because I don't know that you saw them. You can have your choice of... One of these dish towels. It's the bunny one. This is the one I used to make the pillow. Then this one is carrots. The, I think all of these are pretty much the same size. But there's one with carrots. Just say carrots. There's one that says Happy Easter. And it's got two. There's one that says uh, somebody, some bunny loves you. And it's got three little bunnies on it. And you've got two different things that you could use there or you can just use them as an Easter towel so let me know in the comments which one you would like and we'll get that out to you this next week okay so tonight someone is going to win uh, a package of my napkins and we'll go through those in a little bit but we're going to use three different things tonight and I'm going to this is kind of a first for me this is what plastic charger from um, Hobby Lobby that I got on sale that I thought was really pretty around the edges. And Karen, with Karen Hunter wants to know where you got the towel. Uh, home decor. The, the carrots and the bunnies I got at Home Goods. And the others I ordered off Amazon last year. But check Home Goods, they have some really, really cute dish towels. And you get two for like $7. And, and they're really pretty dish towels. Okay, so this came from, um, like I said, Hobby Lobby. It was on sale. But it's smooth in the middle, and that's one thing you want to look for when you're talking about decoupaging a napkin on it. Now, it's pretty thick, but it's not glass. Um, and I have not used the iron-on method on plastic, but I'm pretty sure this is thick enough it will be fine. But we're going to try that. Now, I have already put a layer of Mod Podge on this one because it was a larger area than my others. To do the iron-on method, you know you have to put down your medium first, which I use Mod Podge. I use just this plain, don't have my glasses on, let me see, I think it's matte, yeah, the matte Mod Podge with the yellow. I have some Mod Podge glitter and I have some dishwasher safe, but this is what I use for my napkins. Now I do not put a coating on top of my napkins unless I'm putting them on my website to sell and then I use a spray, that 2X Rust-Oleum spray. Personally, I don't like the way Mod Podge looks as a top coat because no matter how hard I try, I can still see the lines in it and you can't do that, you can't see that with a spray. Anything I put in my house that's going to be inside, I don't even bother with clear coating it or anything. Um, now I know there are some clear coats out there I think there's one that's called Gesso or something like that, G-E-S-S-O, -S -S that um, says you can't see the streaks, but I'm not sure about that. But if you're doing it for your home and it's inside, you wouldn't have to coat the top of it if you're not stenciling or something on your napkins, which you can do. Okay, but we're going to use this plate. I, this is already dry. I didn't know it would dry that quick. We're actually going to use a couple of small pieces of wood. You can see I've already used this one for my tiered tray during winter. I'm going to use this side of it and do something for Easter. And then we're going to use this little guy with these cute chicks on it. And I'm going to do something special with those too. 
But let's talk about some tips for your napkins. Most napkins have three plies to them. And um, you have to separate those plies. You only want to use this very top ply of your napkin. If I was to take this and Mod Podge it on here, nothing would stick except this bottom layer and then it would come apart. So you've got to separate your napkins and get, some are just two, most are three. Uh, so you've got to get the ply down to that very top ply and I'll show you the best way I have found to do that. There's a lot of different ways. Some people lick their fingers and they can do it. They put Mod Podge on their fingers. To me, I always, always, I'd get the corner too wet and then my napkin would start tearing. But I'm going to show you what I do. Next, these are already painted. You want the surface on your, whatever you're doing, to be close to the background color of your napkin. The reason why, if you hold up your napkin, once you get it separated, it's really, really thin. And like if I tried to put this pretty napkin on a stained piece of wood that was dark, this wouldn't turn out a pretty white. That dark wood's going to show through. So I always, if, I, if it's white or cream, I paint my wood that color. Now, you want a smooth piece of wood. Uh, chalk paint kind of leaves a um, texture. So if you're using chalk paint, take your wood. And I like to use these. These are just six by six little wood pieces. And I love them because a napkin pretty much covers the whole thing. They stand on their own. You can order them from Amazon. You can buy them, I think, at Michael's and Hobby Lobby. Um, but paint it whatever color. See, it's a little rough anyway. But paint it whatever color if your napkin is a cream, tan color, paint it a cream. So that's one thing you want to remember about your napkins, too. Um, and then if you paint it with um, chalk paint, it kind of leaves a texture. So once you have painted your wood and it's dry, go over it with some sandpaper so that you have a smooth surface. Okay? Any questions about Mod Podging napkins? And like I said, we're going to do something new tonight that I haven't done, but we're going to see. I think it'll work fine. Um, let's see. Did I do? Oh, you can stencil on the top of napkins, but I think you would need to wax once it's really dry. Okay, so let me show you how I separate my napkins. Now, this is a. If you're putting this is one, a napkin instead of having four pieces, you could put this on a, a big sheet. But I would kind of iron my napkins to get all these um, folds out. Some people cut their napkin or tear their napkin. I'm going to use a water pen. Um, I just like the look it leaves with the jagged edges. I always take my ply apart first. I, I don't know why. Um, but I do. <laughs> anyway, I use painter's tape. And it just works it works good for me. And I'll just take a piece of the painter's tape and put it on the back part. Of, and see, it just pulls it right up. That's one ply. So you want to be gentle when you're pulling off the plies. At one point, I told you I'll save some of these because eventually I'm going to get caught up and show you how you can print on that like tissue paper. Okay, so I know this has another ply because this is too thick. So the second one sometimes does not come off as easy as that very first one does. But you can see <laughs> when I take this and kind of pull it, see how it separates? And your napkin's fragile. So just be, just pull it off slow. So this napkin had three plies to it. Most packages when you get uh, a package of napkin will tell you if it's either two or three ply. Your better napkins are usually three-ply napkins. Okay, so I'm just being gentle so I can use as much of this particular napkin as I can. Okay, so to me, that's the easiest way. Now, can you see how thin this, see how, see how the red shows through? But you want that top layer for your napkin. Now. To decoupage with 
napkins to use the iron-on method, you need to apply your Mod Podge and let it dry. So that one's ready for us to put our napkin on, but let me go ahead and get these two pieces, put some Mod Podge on them, um, and so they can be drying. This is by far my favorite way to do napkins. You don't have the wrinkles, and the next day, if you happen to see a wrinkle, pop up, you can just redo the iron, run the iron over this again, and it'll take care of it. You don't need a, an abundance, and that's just kind of trial and error thing. Well, I don't well, put... Karen says less messy, too. Yeah. I mean, it's by far my favorite, and it really does not take long. Um, you want to make sure you don't get these edges unless you want your napkin down there also. Because trust me, it will stick if you get Mod Podge on those edges. My Mod Podge has a... So I just usually run my finger around the edges and get any Mod Podge. So I'm going to put these over here to dry. And I'm not going to put my brush in water yet because we may have some places around the edge that might need a little more Mod Podge. Okay, I'm going to use... I've got a couple of napkins here that I only have one or two of them, so these two are not in my bundle. Um, but I thought this one would be really pretty put on this plate in the center and then maybe put some, I didn't bring it in here, my lavender and greenery up here and decorate it because it will just go like sitting on a kitchen counter or something. And then I'm going to put that one on this bigger one. Okay, so I'm going to have to do the same thing. I've already put my Mod Podge on here and it's dry totally. So I've got to separate this napkin. Now, Karen says love the cross. Yeah, I do too, and I only had two of those, so I'm going to put it for my tear tray. You could, if you want to cut it before you separate it, you can do that. The only thing is, I, sometimes I want a little bit more than the square, but this one I don't think, and I'm going to make it round. So I'll start with the square. This one I'm going to go ahead and show you. You can cut it first. I thought this was a real pretty napkin. I think I ordered this from, there's a site, Ninny's Napkins or something like that. I think that's where I got it. Now these are easier to store and keep if you you don't pull off all the plies, but you can do it the same same way. Just take a little piece of tape, and then I'm gonna with this one. I'm gonna show you the water pen. So just find a corner and get that top layer going. Now this one is just two ply, I'm pretty sure, because that looks pretty thin. Oops. Let's see. And it's got like the, um, if it's got another layer on there, it is. And like I said, I don't have the package to this. So the only way I know is to see if I can, yep, it does have another layer. My goodness, that's thin. <laughs> but there is another layer there, so don't let it fool you. You just have to be really careful or you're going to rip your napkin. Of course, you've got four more um, panels to work with. That's one thing, too. Napkins are inexpensive, and most of them you can get four projects. See, that's so thin that even the color when it was printed came off on this. So there's, there's my napkin. And there's, that's how thin it is. Now, I want it to be in a circle. And I haven't put a hanger, so it doesn't matter which way I turn it right now. I just kind of want to see about where I want to go. And I'm going to kind of make a circle. I love using the water pen. The water pen, it just like the top unscrews. 
you put water in this part and you've got a brush on the other end. You can use a regular paintbrush and a little thing of water, but this you don't, this is a brush. You just squeeze a little bit and get water on it and then you just go around your napkin wherever you want it to curve. All right, and then once you've got that wet, you just, it, it peels off really easy and it leaves just little, I don't know how to describe it. And I don't know if you can see, but can you see how it's got a feathered edge? The water just helps it tear off really easy. Doesn't have to be, if you're picky picky and want a perfect circle, put something down, draw a line, and then do the circle. I'm normally not that picky. I'll just do this and put it on the plate and see if I like it. You don't have to squeeze much. Usually once you squeeze once, it's pretty much, it's enough for the whole napkin. And I'm just kind of rounding the corners here. And I don't want the straight sides. The others, I'm not going to do this. I'm just going to use sandpaper and get them off. All right, I don't want my bottom straight. Wants to know where you got the water paint. Um, I believe even Dollar Tree has them. I ordered mine off of Amazon. Um, but I think Hobby Lobby, and somebody said even the Dollar Tree sold them now. They're not hard to find, Ann. But that's what they're called, a water pen. Like I said, you can use a regular paintbrush if you want to. Okay, see, that's kind of a... Thank you, Miss Ann, for the sprinkle. Uh, let's go up this way a little bit, too. Y'all, there's either something in this house. My nose has not itched. It started itching on the earlier live. Something at this table or <laughs> now you can something tell about being online. It's like, man. You can tell everybody you're allergic to me. <sighs> yeah, but I've been around you most of the day. Okay. That's the one thing, too. See, that white on white is going to look really pretty. Now, I am going to kind of round this a little bit more right there. Tear a little bit you more. Can't even, can't even see <coughs> Excuse me. The napkin. Yeah. It'll just blend right in and it'll be fine. But let me. <coughs> that almost looks like a heart down here, so. You could have put a square napkin on there. I just. I don't like things particularly square. <laughs> Sue says. It's because your neighbor is finally watching. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sue, you need to come over here and get crafty, girl. You know, Ed, everything I do now, Ed says, I could do that. I could do that. And I'm like, well, then do it. One of these days, I'm going to get him, if nothing else, let me tape him doing something. He could do this project. Easy. You know, he's seen it so many times. He could do it. Okay, when you figure out where you want it and your Mod Podge is dry, you want to take a piece of... Yeah, I do too. And you want to... It's best to put it on a flat surface. Otherwise, you're going to have little pieces of texture under your napkin. Thank, you, thank you for sharing it with care. You want parchment paper, not wax paper. Parchment paper. And you just put it where you want it. And I got napkin under my fingernail. And Travis says, why don't he do it? I'll give He's you a hint. He's scared. <laughs> okay. But he could. All right. And then I'm going to gently lay my parchment paper over my napkin to kind of protect everything. And I'm just going to kind of start in the middle with, with my little iron. And what you're doing is just you're heating up that Mod Podge. I don't, this is plastic, so I don't want to leave the iron on there so long it melts my plastic. 
And with napkin, they're so thin, it only takes a minute. And it reactivates that Mod Podge. And your napkin sticks to whatever you've got under there. And the reason you would kind of want to start in the middle and go out is just to take care of any bubbles. And then you just lift it up. Check and see if you have any edges, and I, and I don't. But that's how quick it is. It looks, let me hold it up. On this, it looks like it's been painted on there. Can you see that? There's no rough edges. It looks like it's been painted on. And what I intend to do with this is like put some pieces of greenery and purple up here. But um, I don't even know where that thing is at. I was going to tell you to go get me my little easel thing, and now I don't know where it is. See if on the fireplace if there's something sitting on that wooden easel. But anyway, you would just, something like this, you would just, now, you don't want to put food on this. There is some stuff you can purchase to put over it to make this food safe. Uh, but this is just decorative is what I'm making it for. But I'm going to put some of the lavender up here and put a pretty bow. And then it would just sit. That's not going to hold it. I don't even think my phone thing will hold. Nope, it's going to push my phone off. So I'll just leave it laying right there for now. Okay. I'm not going to use my water pen again. Okay. Let's see if I can get it straight. So that's what that's what you would do. And see, this would be real pretty sitting on a cabinet or a counter or anywhere and, and put a bow and something up there. So that's the one on the plate. That's how fast it is. took me longer to go around it and make a circle than putting it on there. So let's see if our next piece is... Nope, that's sticky. That's sticky. So I'm going to have to take a minute and dry these. Because you don't want to do it if it's sticky. I thought by the time I got that done that these would be dry. You just want to make sure you dry them and that you don't keep it on there um, and melt it. But it dries pretty quickly. Okay. I think that's about all it took. Karen said very nice. Okay, so we're going to do the little chicks last. This is the one I want to do the cross. Now, when I ordered these, and these were printed here in the U.S., therefore... They only had the license or the equipment to print on one part of the napkin. So you pay for a napkin, but this is what you get. <laughs> you only get one, one thing down here. But I really liked it, so, and I wanted to try their napkins. There again, I don't know if this is two or three ply. So I have to take, I know I have to take one ply off. And I'm going to do one of these other corners up here to where there's not, there's not anything. All right. I pretty much with the tape can, can get it the first try. And I believe I either got two plies at one time because this is real thin. I'm pretty sure this is the bottom ply coming here. And if I rip my cross, I'm going to be very unhappy because there's no using another panel. But I ordered quite a few um, spiritual, religious napkins from this place. And I'm hoping it's printed where it comes off easy and does not tear my napkin. You just have to be careful because it's so thin. As long as it doesn't tear where my words are, I think we'll be fine. 
Okay. I'm going to need my little chick back. Okay. All right, now this one I'm just going to go ahead and cut the square. Because I'm going to take sandpaper and make it where it fits this piece of wood exactly. So I'm going to lay it on the wood where I want it. And I'm not going to put anything on this. This just barely fits this piece of wood that I had. And I'm going to get it where I want it. Put my parchment paper down and then just iron this. And you want to make sure you get the edges. Uh, using the iron method is just so much faster and easier. Remember how you used to have to put the napkin down and take a a, um, a brush. I forgot the name of the brushes. A chip brush. And you would usually always get bubbles. and you know. Then you want to make sure that you've got that all the edges are caught. That one not going to put it on the ink, but make sure all the edges are have reactivated that. Okay, and I'm going to set it aside for a minute because you want to let it cool just a little bit. So let's do our chicks. And with this one, I'm going to cover this with the chicks, but Let's see, I want to try to get as many chicks on there as I can. Then I'm actually going to put it on something and fix it up really cute. Okay. So I'm just going to cut off part of this one. Since this is like a background, I don't want to go just right to the... Pauline Ball wants to know what kind of iron you use. This is a uh, Cricut mini press. I think they're about $29 on Amazon, but I love it. Uh, you can use any kind. of. I used my regular <laughs> iron that, I don't iron clothes. I use just a regular iron on a low Maria setting. Francesco says if you're using a regular iron, just what setting would you use? It would need to be fairly low, especially with napkins. Now, if you're using scrapbook paper or Printables. We're going to do one here in a couple of weeks where you can get printables off the internet. Just print them out and use them. Um, if you're using thicker paper, you'd want to turn it up a little bit. But I would say start out pretty low. Okay. Get my paper right where I want it. And then just run the iron up. This one has three settings, and I have it on the lowest setting here. But you see how the, the board was white? See how it makes the white on the background of the napkin pop? And I'm just going to check my edges. Okay, they, that one needs a little bit more right there. And the reason you use the parchment paper is you don't want to get glue or anything on your iron and then get something on your napkin and mess it up. Okay, uh, let's let that cool. All right, I think this one's cool enough. So uh, what I'm going to do is just, this is called a sanding gator, but any sanding block, um, you could even use an emery board if that's all you have because this is a small piece. And it doesn't take much pressure. Just go down on your edge and sand off the excess napkin. You, you don't want to go up and down because it could pull your napkin loose. You want to start and go down. Thank you. I think when I get, I'll have to take a picture of it after I get my um, lavender on it. I think it'll be really pretty. 
Okay. Brenda you can get some beautiful. Hi, Brenda. You can get some really pretty napkins, and you can do so much with napkins. All right, just like that, y'all. I have made. I have taken my little snowman face, and all I have to do is turn it over for Easter for my tear tray. And that's how quick that was. And it's just as smooth as it. It looks like it's painted on, doesn't it, Ed? Yeah. Okay, so there's that one. Now let's get the excess off the chick. And I had thought, with this chick, I'm going to take this little basket that I think I paid, well, it's $4, but it, I probably got it on sale. I don't pay full price for anything much. Um, but I thought it would be really cute to put this inside this basket. I'm trying to think if I wanted to do the sides, but no, you're not going to be able to see them. And then I have some little chicks that we're going to put on there. You could, and I thought about um, stenciling on top of this. I had a stencil that said chicks rule, but it would have taken up most of the little board. And I thought, no, I don't want to hide my chicks, so I'm not going to do that. All right, and that's how quick it comes off. Looks like I might have got it a little bit crooked, but it's not going to matter. I'm going to take it and glue it in here. And I think maybe I did get my chicks just a little bit tilted. But I guess that's okay. And I made this little egg and chick last year on live. And I'll try to see if I can find it. But it's just an egg that I took and cut. Not a real egg. It's one of those real thin eggs that are hollow in the middle. And made it look like it had busted open and I put some moss in it and then I stuck one of these little chicks that you can buy let me find the box they're just um, Easter chicks there were six of them in a little box and so I stuck them down in these eggs and so I thought what I would do is have this high enough that I can put this little egg right down here too just kind of glue it under there. So I'm going to put it pretty high. I'm just going to take some some hot glue and put on the inside of this board. Miss Brenda says that's cute. I thought it would be really cute with this napkin. So I'm just going to Now you definitely, if I was going to sell this, I would probably do more than just hot glue. I might use some E6000. I don't know how well this hot glue is going to hold with this wicker stuff. But you could put one of the little um, cable mounts like I use on the back of a wreath on the back of this and run a wire or pipe cleaner through, through these holes and tie wrap it and do it smooth. I have made big tobacco baskets and put flowers in them and that's how I attach my the greenery that I'm going to put the flowers in. Um, I wrap wire around it and just run it through these holes. But I think I think that'll hold it fine. And then I'm actually going to take one of these little chicks here and some moss. And I think I'm going to try to use this green moss. I'm probably fixing to make a big mess. But I'm going to take just a little bit of this green moss and put it here at the bottom. I'm going to try to keep it all on this mat. And I'm going to just run some glue here right on the bottom of my board and stick that moss in there. Try not to burn my hand. 
I'm going to put more on one side than the other because I want my little egg to sit over here. And then I'll give it a haircut in a minute. See, I just put some green, green moss down here in the glue. And then I'm going to take this little guy. I had him sitting in my tear tray. And the bracken says she loves your ring too. Oh, you know, I love that purple. Yeah. All right, I'm going to glue this little egg right here. When you're using something for a tear tray, you don't have to put tons of glue on stuff. It'll All right, get your eyes there. And then I'm going to put this other little chick kind of over here in the other corner. Or should I just leave one chick? I'd say one chick. You think one chick? Yeah. You could put little bitty Easter eggs there. So it's either a little chick there too. Yeah, I'd go with one chick. Less is more, right, Ed? Yeah. <laughs> okay, now I might, and this is cute just like it is, but it would be really cute to Put a tag or put a stencil or something here that says Happy Easter. Pauline Ball and agrees with me. One, one chick. chick. I think the little egg. Karen says one chick. One chick. So, I mean, that's how you can just take something as simple as a napkin. Um, I think this was $3. And it could be propped up. Or I don't think it'll set by. Yes, it does set by itself. So, it could go in a kitchen window. It could go, you know, anywhere on a desk. Um, I probably will put a little tag here somehow that says Happy Easter or something like that. So that was our three projects for tonight. Let me clean up this um, moss. And then I want to show you my latest, it's called, um, I think, Easter 2023 napkin bundle. I have several napkin bundles on. The chick is in this one. The other two are not. Um, but there are some very pretty napkins in the bundle. Did Ann Travis ever say which um, dish towel she wanted? Did you see it? No. Okay. Brenda Bracken said put a small bow on it. Yeah, something that would be cute. Okay, so here are the napkins that come in the bundle. Somebody's going to win this bundle. There's this cute one, and it's called a cocktail size. These are your smaller ones. And it's, so you could open it up and use a piece of wood this size because it's not. brown bunny from before. Brown well, it's like the ones almost in the towel. It's got more color to it. Then there's this pretty bunny. And that has four panels. Hang on. Like that. So you, have, you could get four projects out of that one. There's this adorable little guy. And he would be so cute uh, just to put on a white piece of board and then put a ribbon over his bow tie and kind of make it... Um, 3D and put him on a little fuzzy tail. That would be cute. Then there's only one this size. This is the carrots. There again, that's like the dish towel. This would be a background for a large project. And carrots are running all different ways. So that's in this bundle. You get 10 napkins in the bundle. I think it's free shipping. All right, then there's the rest of them are all these larger. Um, uh, luncheon size they're considered and they're the perfect size for these little boards you just barely have a little bit to take off and always think about ways that you can put like cut an egg in half and put it over these eggs or something to make it look 3d this one also has four they're all just alike I believe then there's this one that's yellow you get four panels for it. Hold him up again. I missed it. No. Oh, okay. The little yellow bunny. Yeah. Then there's the one, the chick, the one that I just used here. That could be a background. Now these two or three, I think there's just two panels. Yeah, the other side's white. So you get two two bunnies like that on this one. This one, I believe you get two Easter eggs. Yeah, the other side's white. So you would have two, 
two panels on that one. And this one, I believe, is just all, it's a background. Nope, no, it's got white on that side, too. So you've got this whole background for that. But that's the napkin bundle. So um, if you're interested in this napkin bundle, the first person that I see that says napkins, and remember, they're, they're going to win it. Remember, you may see one before I see it. It's got something to do with your internet speed, my internet speed. But the first person that says napkins. All right, Miss Pauline Baldwin, first one I saw. Uh, if you will PM me, Miss Pauline, if you'll PM me your address, I will get these in the mail to you this next week. And I hope I've kind of taught you a couple of things that you can do with them or make some decor. But napkins are an excellent way to make inexpensive decor for your home. I have done, Ed, would you go in there on the fireplace and get, oh, sorry. There's a wood piece about this long and it's got bunny rabbits that run across and it's got a butterfly on it and a cross. I did this piece last year. You'd never know it was made from just a napkin. And I added a couple of things to it. Um, and I made it last year, and it's stored for a year. And I pulled it out the other day and put it on my fireplace. I'm pretty sure he can find it. Let's hope he can find it. So congratulations to Miss Pauline. And Anne, if you're on here, yeah. No, that's a different one. Get the one with the bunnies. This is, this is a napkin, <laughs> but this is different. I made this one last year, too. Maybe the bunnies don't have the butterfly. All right, this is a napkin. I stenciled He Is Risen, put a little bow on it, a cross, and a butterfly. Maybe I didn't put a butterfly on the bunnies. But these are brown, kind of brown-looking bunnies, Ed. See, I have quite a few things on my um, fireplace. But this was just made, still got the price on the back of it, Two twenty-four out of a little wooden thing from Hobby Lobby in the clearance section. That's it. He d it doesn't have a butterfly on it, does it? Oh, it does, but he's not 3D. This was made from a napkin. And see, you'd never know that was a napkin. That, that's just put on the inside of this, um, there again, $2 and something. It was a sign of some sort from Hobby Lobby. And I just painted white and did the white brush and just, and see, I mean, there's no bubbles in this, and this is a year old. So you can do some really neat things with napkins. Just let your creativity flow and have fun doing it. And that's the main thing. But, um, so I will, these two are pretty much done unless I put a bow or stencil on this one. Um, but I will finish this one up. I think it really does need some lavender greenery up here. I don't know about a bow. If I do a bow, it'd be a real kind of small one. But it just needs something up here at the top. But that was our three projects for tonight. Um, I appreciate y'all hanging in there with me today. You know, I had a doctor's appointment this afternoon, so I kind of had to make um, my projects fairly short. Next week, I'm really not sure what we're doing. I kind of kind of have an idea. It definitely will be Easter projects. Um, I think we're going to take a wood slice and make a bunny face out of it. And then I think what I wanted to do, um, I think it was some magnolia stencils that I have or something. But anyway, we will be live next Wednesday, 1230, and then again at 6 o'clock. And you can always um, watch the replays. And Thank you for blessing it, Ms. Brenda. Yeah, thank you. Um, I wanted to tell you, too, I have free shipping in my Etsy shop right now. And also, just for y'all, it's not advertised. If you use the um, code word March Madness, all capital letters, you get an extra 25% off whatever you purchase. Um, you have to use that code, and it's good this whole month of March, and it's only for those of you that are seeing the live or the replay. Is that so, good for the bundles? The bundles? Yeah. Like the kits? Yeah. Yeah, it's good for anything. The free shipping, you have to have at least uh, $35 in your cart. But um, 
I, the 25 percent off I think should be for anything in there but um, it's not being advertised the free shipping I did advertise but the the other is just for those watching the live so I appreciate even if you're watching the replay put in hashtag replay so that I know you watched it and that helps the algorithms pick up my page and show it to more people so thank y'all for being here and watch for another it won't be a live live it will be a YouTube I take all my lives and put them on YouTube so you might search for creations by Julie on YouTube also and all the lives for the last two years will come up and you can watch them but I will find one with Easter that I did for last year and share it Saturday that's what I call my Saturdays share it Saturday so um, watch for it to be posted on Saturday and then we will be back live uh, my iron is turning off, I guess. Uh, we'll be back live at 12.30 on Wednesday. Y'all have a great weekend, and stay warm. I think most of us are getting a pretty good cool front coming through. So be safe. Bye-bye.